Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is Monday, the 4th of February, 2019, the 29th of Shvat, 5779, here on the eve of Rosh Chodesh Adar Aleph, the first Adar. This year it is a leap year on the Jewish calendar, so we have Adar Aleph, and then we have Adar Bet after that, where the holiday of Purim falls out, and before you know it, it will be Passover. Now, I will admit to you, I am very, very tired this morning here, uh, Monday morning recording, because I stayed up all night to watch the Super Bowl. And for those of you who have been listening to me over the years, you know that I am definitely not a fan of the New England Patriots, but nevertheless, definitely want to congratulate the owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, who's a true friend of Israel, a proud Jew, and just a mensch, a great guy. So I do want to congratulate him on his sixth Super Bowl title ever since buying the team um, there back in the 90s. So congratulations, Robert Kraft. I have lost a night of sleep, and I'm very tired. But we are still going to do the show. The show must go on. On the program today, Jeremy the Man Sultan, our Knesset insider. We have not spoken to him in a long time. He has taken a different path somewhat. He's still involved in Knesset and politics or whatnot. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he has joined... Uh, Naftali Bennett and Ayala Chaked in the so-called new right-wing party. We'll hear from him after the break. But first, we'll get to all the news. Don't forget, you can get in touch with me during the week. Josh at thelandofisrael.com on Facebook. Joshua Haston. Check out my new page um, there on Facebook. It's actually called Josh Haston uh, Israel Advocacy and Journalism, I believe. So check that out. Also, Twitter, at Josh Haston. Front page of today's Jerusalem Post is Gilad Erdan, Minister of Strategic Affairs. There are more than 100 links between the internationally designated terrorist organizations Hamas and the PFLP with NGOs promoting, promoting rather, the anti-Israel BDS movement. In other words, they are two sides of the same coin, Hamas, PFLP, the terror groups, and um, the BDS movement. This according to a new report by Erdan, which he revealed on yesterday. More than 30 members of Hamas and PFLP hold senior positions in the BDS-promoting NGOs, the vast majority of whom have been imprisoned for terrorism-related crimes, including murder, and maintain active ties with the terrorist group. So those of you who are supporting BDS and saying, uh, no, it's a legitimate boycott against Israel, and of course always bringing up Israel's policies in Judea and Samaria, well, the heads of BDS are in cahoots or are actually members of terror organizations. So enough of this legitimate protest against Israel. These are terrorists who are in charge. These are terrorists who are leading the BDS. It's all one and the same. And you got to check out Gilad Erdan's report about um, about this reality. He said, when people talk about the goals of the BDS movement, they don't bother to read official statements from its leaders. If you do so, it becomes clear that the goals of its leaders are the same as those of the leaders of the Palestinian terror organizations. BDS rejects Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state within any borders. They want to see Israel wiped off the map. That is the goal of BDS. Terror, BDS, it's all linked. Check that out. At the same time, Palestinian Media Watch yesterday um, revealed that the Palestinian Authority is officially choosing terror promotion, the promotion of terror, and rewards over U.S. aid. There was a whole brouhaha coming out of the propaganda machine there in the Palestinian Authority claiming, oh no, the Americans are cutting us out, are shutting us down, they're not giving us the money which they promised to provide us through U.S. aid, and this is a horrible thing. It's all a scam, folks. It's all a scam. Listen to this report. Our good friend Maurice Hirsch, who was on the show several times, he reveals here, as of January 31st, the U.S. administration ceased all its aid to the Palestinian Authority. And then uh, here, Saeb Arakat, Palestinian chief negotiator, responds, hundreds of Palestinians will be losing their jobs. He goes on and on and on. But in reality... It's not the U.S. that has made such a decision. It's the Palestinian Authority, headed by Mahmoud Abbas, says uh, Maurice Hirsch, which has positively decided to reject all 
of the considerable U.S. aid to the so-called Palestinians. It is done by actively choosing to continue its pay-for-slave policy, whereby the PA squanders hundreds, squanders hundreds of millions of dollars annually to incentivize and reward terrorism and terrorists, including convicted murderers and the families of dead terrorists. In other words, the U.S. has decided we will no longer be a part of this pay-for-slave program. Therefore, we are not going to fund the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority turns around and cries that the U.S. isn't funding them anymore. But in reality, the PA has rejected the U.S. funding because they have made a conscious decision to continue the pay-to-slave program in which terrorists and their families... um, as some serving in Israeli prisons, are paid according to how many Jews they murdered. The more Jews you murder, the more money you make. The more Jews you injure, the more money you make. That's how the pay-to-slave program works. So the PA has officially decided it would rather it would rather keep this program going than accept any type of actual humanitarian aid which would go to those in need who are living under the Palestinian Authority control. This is a major development, and it really once again sheds some light as to who the Palestinian Authority is. If they really had their the the their uh, the interests rather of their own people in mind, they would take the aid and they would get rid of the pay to slay. That is not the case. Pay to slay is priority. Those who commit terror attacks are revered. Town squares, soccer tournaments are named after suicide bombers and those who carry out murderous stabbing attacks. They teach their children that you will go to uh, heaven with 72 virgins if, in fact, you carry out terror attacks in the name of jihad. Um, So there you have it. That is who they are. And anybody who says we should sit down and negotiate with them or turn over land uh, to the Palestinian Authority... They are ignoring the reality, um, or they are just not educated. They just don't know that reality. Moving on, this is some good news. Uh, The TIPH, the so-called Temporary International Presence in Hebron, uh, this group from 1997 has been wandering the streets of Hebron and essentially um, harassing and bothering IDF soldiers and causing a real headache for the residents of Hebron, but Prime Minister Netanyahu decided that he would not sign on to an extension of their mandate. Israel and the Palestinian Authority both are supposed to sign every six months if they agree to extend their mandate. They, Israel has been doing it for 22 years, and the Prime Minister finally said, enough is enough. TIPH is going home. They are out of here. All of those European countries who make up um, those uh, so-called do-gooders who really aren't do-gooders, just anti-Israel haters wandering through the streets of Hebron from Norway, Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey. They are being sent packing, and uh, and this and this is a positive development. Um, Cybercat, there he is again, saying, I want to ask the countries involved um, in TIPH to really coordinate amongst themselves and to refuse the Israeli decision because Israel cannot from one side canceled the agreement. This is Cyberica, and that's absolutely a lie. Israel can cancel the agreement, or rather, more accurately, decide not to renew the mandate. So he is, is lying once again, and this is, uh, this is good news. Of course, in recent uh, months, it was revealed that TIPH, in one case, they slapped a 10-year-old boy in Hebron, and another one, another TIPH representative, was caught slashing tires of a Jewish resident of Hebron. You can actually check out my article on JNS. It's up on JNS.org. Uh, I wrote a piece this past week talking about the reality of TIPH and what they really stand for, what they're really all about, completely biased against uh, the Jews of Hebron and the state of Israel. So get to know the reality of TIPH. And let's celebrate the fact that this is good news. Maybe I should have left it for the end. That to celebrate the fact that they are out of here. In Hebron yesterday, also, I mean, you could you could probably call this a miracle. Very, very fortunate. You had a, an Arab in his 20s trying to enter the cave of the patriarchs, Marat HaMachpelah in Hebron. He was armed with a knife. What he tried to do is he tried to embed himself within a tour group, try to walk in through security as if he was part of a, a foreign tour group, a tour group from outside the country, and luckily, and thank God, 
Um, he was caught. Security forces there, border police noticed something suspicious about this guy. Noticed he was didn't really belong to the group, and he was stopped, and he was caught with a huge knife, and he was subsequently arrested, um, and he was going to carry out. God forbid, who knows what kind of uh, how deadly of an attack he could have possibly carried out inside uh, Maratha Machbala, the cave of the patriarchs. Mahmoud Abbas here, we're talking a lot about the Palestinian Authority. Um, Abbas, according to, uh, I believe this is Times of Israel, he refused to meet with a joint Israeli-Palestinian so-called peace group last week unless Israeli supermarket mogul Rami Levy was dropped from the delegation. Now, I don't know anything about this Israeli-Palestinian so-called uh, peace group, what their intention was, if this was a legitimate aim towards some sort of coexistence. I don't know anything about the initiative, but I do know the fact that Mahmoud Abbas said that this meeting isn't happening unless Rami Levy is uninvited from the group. Now, what did Rami Levy do that's so bad? Rami Levy opened a supermarket in Gush Etzion. He opened a supermarket in the Binyamin area, a new supermarket in the Atarat neighborhood in Jerusalem, all of those areas considered to be uh, what they would call in Jewish uh, settlements in Area C. Um, but obviously I refer to them as Jewish communities or near Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. So Mahmoud Abbas decides the meeting is canceled because Rami Levy, what's his crime? Rami Levy provides food for Arabs living under the Palestinian Authority. If you're an Arab in Bethlehem or in Hebron, you come to Rami Levy and you go shopping side by side with Jews who live in the area as well. So number one, uh, Mahmoud Abbas is saying, I don't care if Arabs are being provided with food or able to go out and buy and shop for food um, because of Rami Levy or thanks to Rami Levy. I don't care about that. And also, he doesn't care about, um, it, you know, it just doesn't show he doesn't care about his people. And the Arabs, some, so many Arabs work for Rami Levy inside those supermarkets. So another, we, this is the second time here we are proving whether it's uh, the failure to accept the U.S. aid and the uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority sticking to their guns that they're staying with this pay-to-slay um, program, or the fact that um, Mahmoud Abbas does not value or does not want those Arabs living under the Palestinian Authority to have jobs with Rami Levy to provide for their families or to actually purchase food in those supermarkets. So... Once again, proving the true face of Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority. Anybody who thinks we should negotiate with them, I don't know what your story is because this is who they are. They want a Yudin Rhine country from the river to the sea. They don't want Jews anywhere, not just in Judea and Samaria. They don't want Jews anywhere in the state of Israel. We're going to finish with some positive news here, and then we are going to take a break and come back with Jeremy the Man Sultan, Knesset Insider. Have you seen these videos, perhaps, on YouTube or Facebook of the Shalva Band? This is an amazing story. The Shalva Band is a group of uh, Israeli musicians who have different disabilities. It's an eight-member band, and they have been winning over the hearts and minds here, as reported by the Jerusalem Post, of the show's panel of judges. They're on a show. It's a competition. And the winner of the competition gets to represent Israel in the upcoming Eurovision 2019 tournament, uh, singing tournament competition, if you will, which is actually taking place here in Israel in Tel Aviv because Israel's... Um, What's her name, Ben Bresky? Netta Barzilai. Bars, thank you, Ben. Netta Barzilai won last year's competition. Therefore, Israel hosts the competition. Um, and Shalva, this group, some of them are blind. Others have uh, Down syndrome or whatnot. They make beautiful, beautiful music. And now they are in the finals for uh, representing Israel in this year's Eurovision. It's completely, it's, it's so inspiring to watch the band perform. Now, there is a, an issue. Unfortunately, there is some kind of Eurovision rule that says, well, the competition is Saturday night. You have to attend the rehearsal on Friday night, and you do have some religious members of, um, of the Shava band, uh, those who are Sabbath observant. So they may, at the end, have to pull out of the competition because of these Eurovision 
uh, rules which would not allow them to practice or whatever this type of rehearsal they can't do it on Friday you can't accommodate for them I hope it doesn't come down to that because they make amazing music if they're actually if they actually win the competition they I think would do an unbelievable job representing the state of Israel but it's a true inspiration so if you've not seen the Shalva band you can see it it's gone viral on YouTube Facebook all social media you can check them out a truly truly wonderful wonderful project a wonderful group or band if you will who are doing an amazing job representing the the beauty of the state of Israel. So check out Shava. My name is Josh Haston. This is Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Jeremy the Man Sultan, Knesset Insider, coming on the show when we come back. It is Monday, February the 4th, 2019. I am definitely on a Super Bowl hangover. No, not from alcohol, from lack of sleep, staying up all night watching the New England Patriots and Julian Edelman, by the way, who was voted MVP of the game. He's halakhically not Jewish, but he identifies with uh, the Jewish people. He identifies with the state of Israel. I had the pleasure, actually, of interviewing him um, on a different platform several years ago when he was here visiting, uh, when he was visiting Kraft Family Stadium in Jerusalem, holding a clinic for some of the players. Great guy, great person, and um, it was great to see him win MVP of the Super Bowl. We are taking a short break and coming right back with Jeremy the Man Sultan. Don't touch that dial. In the year 2048, Israel will have 20 million citizens. 20 million in this small country and 50 million of them will be Jewish. Because in Israel you remain Jewish. This is Gil Hoffman, a host of Inside Israel Today, here on the Land of Israel Network. Listen to my interview with storied Israeli general turned Likud Knesset candidate Uzi Dayan on my show, Inside Israel Today, here on the Land of Israel Network, on thelandofisrael.com. And we are back, Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is the 4th of February, 2019, the 29th of Shvat, 5779, coming to you on this beautiful Monday from Jerusalem. I'm trying to keep it together, folks. I'm pretty, pretty tired after watching uh, that Super Bowl staying up all night. But a lot of things going on here in Israel. Of course, we're gearing up towards elections. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've had several um, MKs and those who are seeking positions as members of Knesset here in Israel on the show. But what would an election be without talking to our Knesset insider, Jeremy the Man Sultan, who's been our Knesset insider for many years here on the program and on other platforms here on Israeli Talk Radio. Jeremy, welcome to Israel Uncensored here on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. How are you? I'm doing great. It's good to hear from you, Josh. You know, this is the first time I've not watched the Super Bowl since I was a kid. You didn't miss much, I'm telling you. It was a, uh, it was not one of the better games, but you know what? At the end of the day, Robert Kraft getting another ring, and it's only good for Israel. So even though I don't oh, like the Patriots, Patriots the Patriots won. Yeah, 13-3, to the lowest scoring game in, in football uh, Super Bowl history. So it was kind of a snooze fest. It was a terrible halftime show. But uh, Julian Edelman, who identifies with Israel and the Jewish people, yeah. he is uh, he's the MVP. So um, so for all I those expect, reasons, that's good. It was it's it was good. Hard for me. I'll tell you every Super Bowl since your Colts beat my Bears. <laughs> Sorry, it's man. Tough. It's been a long time though. We haven't been back in that in the big game in a while. Well, <laughs> Anyway, getting down to business, Israeli politics. Uh, if you can, tell the listeners, you've had some changes, I guess, in, I don't know if you want to call them career path changes or affiliation changes over the last couple of weeks. Tell people what, what your position is now, what you're doing in the world of Israeli politics. Well, I'm sure uh, all of our listeners um, know that I, I spent the last six and a half years in the Bay 2 d party um, leading all of the English operations over there. Um, I received an opportunity um, from Naftali and Ayelet um, when they both went ahead and started this new party to join them. And I decided to uh, take them up on that offer. And uh, I'm part of a new party called Hayamin Hechadash, which uh, we're calling a new Yamin. I can tell that to you now. I think that's the first time I've said that now in English with their new English name there. 
and um, doing pretty much the same thing. And it's very exciting because unlike in Buy 2 d where, and, and the two of you know, I, I tried really hard, really hard to try to help some of our friends get in there on the list. Uh, Jeremy Kimpel, uh, the leader of, uh, of uh, um, the fine uh, radio station that I'm uh, listening to right now, uh, was the one who got closest in that bid. But uh, here we have a situation where we got uh, Carolyn Glick, one of the really the icons of the Anglo community, who is going to be really up there in the uh, new Hayamin Hechadash list. So I'm very excited to be able to you know work with her, to work with Naftali Nayelet, who I've been working with very closely the last six and a half years. To be honest, I was one of the very few people who was offered a position. So. Um, I don't know how many of my friends are are jealous or angry of at me right now, but at least in terms of what they've said to my face, everyone has been very nice on both sides of the party aisle. Yeah, Karen, of course, a uh, good friend of the show. I actually had her on, I think, about a week before the announcement without even knowing that she was going to be selected as a candidate for that list of the uh, Yamina Hadash party. Um, are you yourself running for Knesset? Let's clarify. Uh, I'm not. I'm not aware that I'm running for Knesset. Maybe you heard something. I <laughs> no, I just wanted to see. Perhaps as the the director of the uh, of the Anglo division, maybe that they were reserving perhaps a, a, a spot for you, a slot on the list. You know, is that, that possible? Uh, well, well, you know, Josh, it, 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 there's a custom in Israeli politics that you have to. Um, you don't have to, but you put up uh, 120 names in order to show that. Um, you're a serious party who respects herself, who's going to take uh, um, an opportunity if the Israeli people so choose for you to, f to fill all of the Knesset, you know, our modern day Anshe Knesset Agdola. But um, the first time around in 2013, the Baidu, they asked me, I think it was, I don't remember if it was uh, the 63rd or 62nd slot. I wanted the 61st slot so I could tell people. Um, listen, guys, this isn't America. If it was, you know, we'd have a majority and I'd be a, a Knesset member. Right. But that, that isn't the way that it works here. But like I said, I think I was 62, 63. I moved up in the list in 2015. Uh, I was number, I believe it was um, 49 on the list last time. So, so there's a chance maybe, you know, I'll be a little bit higher this time around. But um, as you know, that's not what we call a realistic spot, nor is it something actually run for um, it, it's a nice thing maybe to, um, to have uh, written down on your resume, but uh, let's be honest, that, that it's just a filler. So tell me then, I mean, I wish you luck. Maybe uh, one of these days you will get a real, realistic slot. You have my vote. But tell me um, this, the new party, the uh, Yamina Hadash. Um, last week I spoke to somebody from Zehut. The week before I had uh, an MK on... Uh, Sharon Haskell from the Likud. There are a lot of people saying that they believe that the most successful strategy would be if the so-called right-wing parties, and I don't know if that includes Likud or not, would perhaps consider merging into one party and having one big list. That way it would guarantee a more broad representation and people would not be throwing their votes out in case some of perhaps the smaller parties do not make or pass the electoral threshold. Do you see any type of chance that your party will merge perhaps, maybe even with the Jewish Home Party, maybe with uh, Ots the Otsma Party or uh, Zahud? It doesn't sound like Zahud's looking to merge. Some of these other parties, do you think that there can be a unified, solid, large so-called right-wing party uh, perhaps merging as we get closer to the uh, the election? Uh, well, I do think that Zahut joined up with Am Shalem, so they've already done one merger, even though, uh, as you said, uh, Feiglin had previously said he was not going to do any mergers. But um, in terms of your question, I think you have to start with Netanyahu and the Likud. Netanyahu has always been a person who's looked um, for mergers. Um, in 96, uh, the first time that he ran for prime minister, he ran on a joint list with Gesher and with Tzomet. Um, in 99, he ran with nobody and he did not end up uh, retaining his position as prime minister. Um, if you go down the list, uh, in 2009, he ran with Achi, which was a religious Zionist party. 
In 2013, he ran with Israel Beitenu. Um, we know that he almost ran with Kulanu last time around. It right. fell apart in um, the last few uh, minutes. So in terms of Netanyahu, he always has a preference to go uh, with other people in the right. I can tell you from the inside during my time in the 18th Knesset, Netanyahu would try to create, uh, that was his first attempt to create the Republican Party in Israel, where he tried to get Shul Mufaz, who was the leader of Kadima back then. They had 28 seats. Likud had 27 seats and Lieberman 15 seats. His idea was to create one party with the three largest parties in um, parliament in Knesset and try to really um, create the, the, this super mega party that, that would um, end up being able to um, sort of have this first ever non-coalition type government. It didn't end up working out too well for him, considering Kadima fell from 27 seats to, uh, sorry, from 28 seats to two seats. I think that that's okay that it didn't work out. I think uh, Netanyahu was happy in the end that it didn't. But um, overall, if you're asking specifically about us, yes, I think it's quite obvious that in this election, we're running for Naftali Bennett to be defense minister, for Ayelet Shaked to retain her position as justice minister. And I highly doubt that Netanyahu would be willing to pay uh, such a price other than within the coalition negotiation process itself. And that happens only when you're separate parties. We all know how the um, coalition negotiation process worked out between the two of them the last two times around. And uh, like I said, I, I don't see that being an offer that Netanyahu would be willing to accept um, to run on a joint platform. So what about you? We brought up Carolyn Glick before uh, with uh, Bennett uh, aiming for the defense ministry and Ayelachik had also wanting to be a minister. Is there a chance that, and you know, they call, they refer to Carolyn as the most popular or most well-known Anglo in all of Israel, you mm -hmm. know, uh, is there a chance that we could see her perhaps as a, as a minister in this, her first attempt at, uh, at running for Knesset. Is that a realistic possibility this time around? Well, Josh, this is something that your listeners, at least those with Israeli citizenship who are going to be here on April 9th, have an opportunity to influence. Look, if, if we're at that situation where every person who's listening to your program who has the ability to vote votes for us, so that's obviously a possibility. Hey, if you're able to get in, you know, uh, if we're able to get in something crazy like 40 seats, then who knows? Maybe I'll even be a Knesset member. <laughs> hey, Josh, you want something in the 40s? Maybe I can hook you up. Uh, yeah, I'll take something. Maybe a little higher, but um, no, I would. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm not going to bypass you. You, you've been doing this a lot longer. But hopefully, yeah, as you know, for those who uh, are listening, um, you know, if you vote for this party, then the more seats they have and this is how the system works the more influence they have when it comes to coalition negotiations um in other words when naftali bennett sits down with the prime minister assuming it assuming it's netanyahu and that's an assumption at this point he is leading the polls then he can I'm say pretty, i'm pretty sure you're confident yeah yeah you're confident he's gonna win uh, I'm, I'm very confident that he's right. gonna win. Okay. look people can look um at the at the numbers in the polls but the blocks don't change and as long as the right wing block is ahead of the left wing block, which it has been since the second Lebanese war uh, back in 2006, um, I don't think that Netanyahu's um, premiership is in any doubt. I know that it's the job of, you know, all the analysts and the news media to come up with all these scenarios and possibilities of how um, it could be a risk that his um, premiership could come to an end. But really, I think the only situation that could happen is based on one of the things you, you alluded to in one of your previous questions, which is all the smaller parties on the right. If we don't have some sort of unification and a lot of those votes end up uh, getting thrown out into the garbage bin. But I'm pretty certain that a lot of these leaders of the smaller parties are really just going to go ahead and start um, merging because there's this thing in politics and it's called um, being able to pass the threshold. So when you have ideology and realism that meet 
and you understand that for you to just be a part of the game, there is a certain sacrifice you have to play, a majority of people are going to take that. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that we will see a lot of mergers happening. There's also the possibility of the Haredi mega party. Um, it'll be very interesting if Eli Shai wants to go towards that or towards some sort of merger on the right of um, Bai Tud, Kuman, possibly Otsma. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going to happen between now and February 21st, which is the deadline to submit lists to Knesset. And I expect that we will have a lot less parties running than we do right now. You are listening to our Knesset insider, Jeremy the Man Sultan, who is now officially with the new right wing. What's what's the official name in Hebrew? Yamina Hadash. So the new right wing. That's that's what we'll call that in in, in English. Because so we're going with uh, New Yamin. New Yamin. New Yamin. Yeah. Look, because you know people are saying like new right and. Um, Listen, we're, we're new right the way that Reagan and Thatcher are new right. right. We're not new right in the way of whatever the European uh, far right seems to think that might mean. So because of that, you have to go through a different name in English. Got you. Um, one last question before we let you go, since uh, you are confident that Netanyahu will be the next prime minister. The Likud, if I'm not mistaken, they are holding their primaries Tuesday, I believe, which is tomorrow. Um, what can we expect? I know we can't, we don't have the time to talk about each individual, uh, potential MK one at a time, because then we would, you know, we could go on for hours and hours, but for sure. what, 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 what can, what do you think that we can expect tomorrow in terms of who's going to make, let's say the top three or the top five coming out of the Likud primaries based on what, you know, based on perhaps what polls are saying, based on popularity, based on what the prime minister wants, who do you see up there at the top of that list? Yeah, sure. I, I think, first of all, I want to wish luck to my friends in the Bayt UD because their primary is today. Ah, there's this today. Friend, okay. My good friends, Raveli Bendehan, Moti uh, Yogev, uh, some of the newcomers, the challengers, uh, Davidi Ben Sion, Shuki Zohar, um, really just a lot of good people running the Bayt UD primary today. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about that, my old friends having an opportunity for them to see themselves promoted. In terms of Likud, I think it's pretty clear that um, Gidon Sar is going to get back in there into the top five. Um, Gilad Ardan, Israel Katz, Yuli Edelstein, these are names that we almost always see in the top five. I expect them to stay there. If you're asking me to round out who's going to be that newcomer to the top five, who we can expect um, you, you know, to be that face that everyone is going to be talking about, um, I would say it's probably going to be either Zev Elkin or Yariv Levin. It's hard for me to know which. Um, those who are expecting Nir Barkat to get a top five finish, I don't see him being able to pull that off in his first Likud primary, but I do think he will end up in a realistic spot. Um, yeah, I, I can go through the list again. I got a lot of friends in Likud, a lot of people running. Um, I think they're going to also put together a pretty attractive list. There's always some of uh, the jokers who do well there as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Oren Khazan does better than people uh, give him credit for. Um, trying to think. I think Chaim Katz might drop a little bit. I think Yuval Steinitz might drop a little bit. I think Tzachi Negbi might drop a little bit. Uh, maybe him more than the others. Um in terms of that, I don't think um, I have any big predictions. The big question mark for me is Avi Dichter. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where he's going to place on the list. I think he is one of those people that when people are looking at the, the names that they can put in, I think he's on like one of the one or two last names for a lot of people on the bottom. And the question is, if anyone bumps him off of their list on um, you know their way to the voting booth, or if he's able to remain on. If he's able to remain on a lot of those ballots, he could do uh, fairly well. If not, I think that um, there's a chance that he could also drop. We don't, we don't mind, by the way, the phone ringing. I know you're busy. I know this is election season, so yeah, so. it's okay. Listen, you got you to do your thing, but we are going to let you go it's also. One of the fight UDMK is calling. Oh, there you go. No, you can't ignore a member of Knesset, but we're, we're actually out of time, and the, so we're going to let you go take that call. Jeremy the Man Sultan, Knesset insider. Um, he has been for years and has helped us out to understand the political situation here in Israel. Also now the Anglo 
spoke the Anglo director for the Yamin Hadash, the new Yamin party. I want to thank you so much for your time this morning. Good luck in the upcoming elections. And we got to do this before as we get closer, if that's okay with you, uh, to April the 9th when the elections for the next Knesset happen here in Israel. We'd love to get your insight as things move forward. For sure. It was great talking to you, Josh, uh, Dash, to, to everybody over there in the Land of Israel Network. Absolutely. To Ari, to Eve, to Gil, Ben, if I forgot anyone. Yishai. Yishai. And a few oh, others, but uh, okay. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Last time I go on a roll call. All right, man. All right. Great have time. a great day. Take care. And that's going right. to do it for today, folks. This has been another edition of Israel Uncensored on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is the 4th of February, 2019. Erev Rosh Chodesh Adar Aleph. Tonight starts Rosh Chodesh here in Israel. It's a two-dayer on Tuesday and Wednesday. The first Adar, of course, Purim comes on the second Adar this year. I want to thank Benjamin Bresky. Without him, there is no sound. We could not make this happen. And Tabitha Epstein for getting all the files prepared. And all the work she does and all the other hosts here on the Land of Israel Network. I want to thank them for all their great work. Um, that's going to be a wrap. Get in touch with me during the week. Josh at the Land of Israel .com on Facebook. Check out my new page. Um, Josh, Josh Haston. I always forget what it is. Joshua Haston is the name on is my profile. But Josh is uh, Israel Advocacy and Journalism page. Check that out as well. Um, and on Twitter at Josh Haston. Wishing everyone out there in the wonderful world of ours a great week. Most importantly, be safe out there. Shalom, shalom from a beautiful day here in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Torah thoughts and inspiration from the heartland of Israel. Tune in every week to the soul of Israel with Rabbi Shlomo Katz on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com.